Let's learn irregular verbs with Amelia Earhart. In this lesson, we'll start by doing a listen and read exercise. The story will be about Amelia Earhart. Then we'll review the 10 irregular verbs you heard in the story. In part three, we'll do an exercise. You will need to fill in the blank with the correct past tense form of the verb. Last but not least, we'll listen again. Are you ready? Let's begin. Amelia Earhart's story is one of resilience and courage. From a young age, she dreamt of flying, even when society did not consider it a place for women. Yet, the opinions of others never threw her off course. She would become one of the world's most famous pilots. Earhart was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24, 1897, and her early years were marked by a fierce independence. Amelia rode horses and played sports, activities that were unusual for girls at the time. These experiences taught her to be fearless and confident, qualities that would later define her career as a pilot. When she finally flew through the skies, she felt a freedom like never before. In 1928, Amelia became the first female to take a transatlantic flight as a passenger, and in 1932, she was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. The world watched in awe as she defied the odds, a lone woman in a field dominated by men. Even when others mistook her determination for recklessness, she remained undeterred. In spite of her chronic sinusitis, which caused her considerable discomfort while flying, she never quit. Amelia's most famous flight, her attempt to circumnavigate the globe, was a testament to her unyielding spirit. It was 1937. The trip was to take 40 days. And it wasn't a walk in the park. As she crossed vast oceans and remote lands, she fought against her own fatigue and the limitations of her plane. One fateful day while flying over the Pacific, 22,000 miles into the trip, the weather took a turn for the worse. Thick clouds obscured Amelia's view of Howland Island, her crucial refueling stop. She radioed ground control, her voice calm yet urgent, as she tried to convey her position. Soon after, her voice fell silent. Despite extensive search efforts, neither Amelia, her co-pilot Fred Noonan, nor their aircraft, the Lockheed Electra 10E, were ever seen again. To this day, the story of Amelia's final voyage remains a symbol of courage, a tale of a visionary spirit whose dreams were never too big. So what were the 10 irregular verbs you heard in the story? Number one, to dream. To dream in the past is dreamt or dreamed. The internet says dreamed is more American and dreamt is more British. But I did a survey and most young Americans I spoke to use dreamt in the past and most older Americans use dreamed in the past, at least in a pool of 10. So whichever one you use is technically correct. Let's go through some examples. Let's start with the sentence you heard in the story. From a young age, she dreamt of flying, even when society did not consider it a place for women. He dreamt of becoming a famous musician one day. They dreamt about their future under the stars. To do. To do in the past is did. From a young age, she dreamt of flying, even when society did not consider it a place for women. She did all her homework before going out to play. He did everything he could to help his friend. To throw. 
To throw in the past is through. T H R E W. Yet the opinions of others never threw her off course. She would become one of the world's most famous pilots. He threw his clothes into the donation bin. They threw a surprise party for their friend's birthday. To teach. To teach in the past is taught. These experiences taught her to be fearless and confident, qualities that would later define her career as a pilot. She taught her students how to solve complex math problems. He taught himself to play the guitar through online tutorials. To fly. To fly in the past is flu. When she finally flew through the skies, she felt a freedom like never before. The airplane flew over the mountains, offering passengers a stunning view of the snow capped peaks. In her dreams, she flew to distant lands and explored new places. To feel. To feel in the past is felt. When she finally flew through the skies, she felt a freedom like never before. He felt a rush of excitement before the race. After the heartfelt conversation, she felt a deep sense of connection with her old friend. To mistake. To mistake in the past is mistook. Even when others mistook her determination for recklessness, she remained undeterred. He mistook her kindness for romantic interest. They mistook the actor for his stunt double on the set. To quit. To quit in the past is quit. In spite of her chronic sinusitis, which caused her considerable discomfort while flying, she never quit. The old woman quit smoking after years of trying. They quit the race early due to a mechanical issue. To fight. To fight in the past is fought. As she crossed vast oceans and remote lands, she fought against her own fatigue and the limitations of her plane. They fought bravely in the battle despite being outnumbered. She fought against the injustice she faced at work. To fall. To fall in the past is fell. Soon after, her voice fell silent. The book fell off the shelf and landed on the floor. She fell asleep while reading a novel. Quiz time! Fill in the blank with the correct past tense form of the verb. Number one. The kite, mm, high in the sky, its colorful tail fluttering in the breeze. What's the past tense of to fly? Flew. The kite flew high in the sky, its colorful tail fluttering in the breeze. Number two. She mm, the sugar for salt while baking the cake. What's the past tense of to mistake? Mistook. She mistook the sugar for salt while baking the cake. Number three. The soft fabric, mm, smooth against her skin. What's the past tense of to feel? Felt. The soft fabric felt smooth against her skin. Number four. The two friends mm, over the last slice of pizza. What's the past tense of to fight? Fought. The two friends fought over the last slice of pizza. Number five. She mm, the ball across the yard for the dog to catch. What's the past tense of to throw? Through. 
she threw the ball across the yard for the dog to catch. Number six. Jess mm, the puppy to sit and stay on command. What's the past tense of to teach? Taught. Jess taught the puppy to sit and stay on command. Number seven. They mm, a great job organizing the event. What's the past tense of to do? Did. They did a great job organizing the event. Number eight. Last night, she mm, a flying over a vast ocean. What's the past tense of to dream? Dreamt or dreamed. Last night, she dreamt of flying over a vast ocean. Or last night, she dreamed of flying over a vast ocean. Both are possible. Number nine. He mm, his job to pursue his passion for painting. What's the past tense of to quit? Quit. He quit his job to pursue his passion for painting. Last one, number 10. The leaves mm, from the trees as autumn arrived. What's the past tense of to fall? Fell. The leaves fell from the trees as autumn arrived. That's it for the quiz. Great job. You're now going to hear the story one last time. Enjoy. Amelia Earhart's story is one of resilience and courage. From a young age, she dreamt of flying, even when society did not consider it a place for women. Yet, the opinions of others never threw her off course. She would become one of the world's most famous pilots. Earhart was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24, 1897 and her early years were marked by a fierce independence. Amelia rode horses and played sports, activities that were unusual for girls at the time. These experiences taught her to be fearless and confident, qualities that would later define her career as a pilot. When she finally flew through the skies, she felt a freedom like never before. In 1928, Amelia became the first female to take a transatlantic flight as a passenger, and in 1932, she was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. The world watched in awe as she defied the odds, a lone woman in a field dominated by men. Even when others mistook her determination for recklessness, she remained undeterred. In spite of her chronic sinusitis, which caused her considerable discomfort while flying, she never quit. Amelia's most famous flight, her attempt to circumnavigate the globe, was a testament to her unyielding spirit. It was 1937. The trip was to take 40 days. And it wasn't a walk in the park. As she crossed vast oceans and remote lands, she fought against her own fatigue and the limitations of her plane. One fateful day while flying over the Pacific, 22,000 miles into the trip, the weather took a turn for the worse. Thick clouds obscured Amelia's view of Howland Island, her crucial refueling stop. She radioed ground control, her voice calm yet urgent, as she tried to convey her position. Soon after, her voice fell silent. Despite extensive search efforts, neither Amelia, her co-pilot Fred Noonan, nor their aircraft, the Lockheed Electra 10E, were ever seen again. To this day, the story of Amelia's final voyage remains a symbol of courage, a tale of a visionary spirit whose dreams were never too big. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. 
Check out the description to learn more.